What's next as we begin this new week? We've asked three of our reporters to look back and ahead. To begin, senior business analyst Jill Schlesinger. The first week of 2016 was the worst ever start to a year for U.S. stocks, with major indexes down over 6%. The cause of the New Year's sell-off was anxiety over a slowdown in Chinese growth, which sent stocks there plummeting roughly 10 percent over five days. But while the pace of growth in China, the world's second largest economy, is important, this country is not greatly dependent on exports to China. Yes, there are some companies that rely on the region for sales and earnings, but not enough, even with a rotten first week for stocks, to trigger fears that the U.S. economy is falling over a cliff. So what's a retirement saver to do? The answer is nothing. Remind yourself that you are in this for the long term and that boarding the investor roller coaster means accepting both the ups and the downs. Keep your emotions in check and stick to your game plan. In other words, stay put. It's hard to do, but you've been on this ride before and know that despite a few white knuckle moments from time to time, you should end up just fine. This is Cole Miller. For more than a week now, an armed militia has occupied the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge near Burns, Oregon. The group is led by Eamon Bundy, the son of Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy, who staged a standoff of his own in 2014. They want the federal government to turn over control of its lands in the area to local authorities. Earlier in the week, the county sheriff, David Ward, met with Bundy, asking him to leave peacefully and to respect the wishes of many residents, even offering an escort out of the state. Bundy refused. And some here say the group is sending a message and stand behind them. It's become a big issue for this small town, one as old as the Old West. I'm Vanita Nyer in a New York City subway station. Don't be surprised if later today, here and in at least 14 other American cities, you encounter fellow travelers without their pants. Be part of this year's No Pants subway ride. Observed, as it were, in cities around the world. Well, welcome everybody to the 14th annual No Pants subway ride. Promoted as an international celebration of silliness, the ride started in 2002 with just seven bold but cold New Yorkers taking part. In more recent years, organizers say thousands have climbed aboard. So whatever else you might think about the No Pants subway ride, it has thrived and survived for 14 years. That means there's little doubt it's an event with legs. <laughs> 